Welcome to uh, Physics Made Easy Part 2. Last week we looked at vectors and scalar and vector quantities. This week we're going to look at how to find the resultant force using a vector diagram. Let us just explain what the word resultant means. Now, if you take a body and there are two or more forces acting on the body, it's the single force that has the same effect as all the forces put together to give you the resultant. Now, for the purposes of an example, let us just take uh, two forces, a 25 Newton force and a 30 Newton force, with an angle of 30 degrees between them. An angle of 30 degrees between them. So the idea now is to draw a vector diagram Sometimes when we're only looking at the forces acting on the object, in science we call that a free body diagram. So let us, before we do anything, we need to decide on a scale. And let's just suppose for arguments, for convenience, we'll say one centimetre is equal to one newton. Now, this scale does need to be a sensible scale. I'm using this scale because so I can get the diagram, a fairly large diagram, on, on the actual, uh, on the board. But on paper, you may use a, more, a, smaller, a smaller scale. The first thing to do is to draw the 25 Newton force. And obviously, that will be uh, 25 centimetres. Uh, 25 centimetres. is 25 centimetres and draw an angle of 30 degrees to that force using the protractor. Okay, 30 degrees, mark off 30 degrees and then mark off the, let's just draw a line that's long enough and it needs to be 30 centimetres. So, I'll just make sure that that's 30 centimetres. Uh, 30 centimetres. So, that's 30 centimetres. Right, it's the next part, which in fact is the tricky part. And that is, what you need to do now is to take a compass, and if this is your 25 Newton force, Draw an arc 30 centimetres long. So let's just take, let's just make this uh, 30 centimetres. Okay. And draw an arc here 30 centimetres. And for the 30 Newton force, we'll take an arc that's 25 centimetres long. So if I make that 25 centimetres, Okay, 25 centimetres draws an arc. And you'll find that two arcs cross. And then join the tips of those vectors through where they cross. There we go. And what you notice is that you've got a parallelogram. And this is called a parallelogram of forces. How do you get the answer to the resultant? Well, this is your resultant. From there to there, measure the length. Let's just draw that in. And you have your resultant. Let's label that R. R is equal to the resultant. And because we have a scale, we can actually measure the size of the resultant. So we've said that one centimeter is one newton. And this is 54 centimetres. It's 54 centimetres using the scale. Therefore, this must be, the resultant is 54 newtons. Strictly speaking, you should also give the angle. You can either measure that angle with a protractor or this angle and quote your vector to so many degrees to the 30 newton force or so many degrees to the 25 newton. And as before in the Physics Made Easy series, we have a challenge question for you, and that is, 
How could you work out the resultant using a calculation? Thank you, Elizabeth.